What's good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Just Be Wise. And today, we're going to talk about an edited PC. Okay, fam, so here's the agenda. First thing we're gonna do is talk about the parts and why I chose them. After that, we'll go ahead and talk about how it performs in Premiere and After Effects. And then we have a little bit of a bonus talk that we can do at the end where we'll talk about performance for streaming and for gaming. So if you <laughs> you're playing some games, we can talk about that just a little bit. But let's get down to the first part, which is the parts list. So first up, we have the Ryzen 5 3600. So now, I actually have the Ryzen 5 3600X, but I have two buddies who just built their PCs. They used the 3600. Performance is roughly the same, so don't pay the extra money for the X when you can just get the 3600. I believe right now the 3600 is about $200. So I don't know how much the 3600X is. I didn't check. I think it's like 50 more dollars though. So don't waste your money on the 50 extra dollars. Let's talk about the thing that's really going to be driving a lot of the stuff when you're editing is your GPU. I'm using the MSI's version of NVIDIA 1660 Ti. Um, I do recommend getting the 1660 Ti, but let's pause for a moment and let me make this disclaimer. At the time of recording this video, you either can't get any graphics cards or all the graphics cards are ridiculously expensive. I looked right now if you were to buy the 1660 ti it's like 600 dollars. i bought it right before the pandemic and i bought it for like 320 dollars. so it's like twice as much almost so might want to wait a little while if you do plan on buying a pc to you know just wait a little bit for some of these gpus to get back onto the market so everything can fall back in line as far as price goes i would say just hold off if you can if you have to get something right now it's gonna hurt a little bit it's gonna hurt a little bit Okay, so the reason I got the 1660 Ti was I felt like it was the most bang for your buck. And again, I got it not only for my editing purposes, but I also do a little bit of live streaming and gaming. This was one of the best to do 1080p gaming while live streaming. So best bang for your buck, if you ask me. And again, that's with the disclaimer of it was then priced at like $320 opposed to now where I saw it on Amazon for like $600. Don't buy it for $600. Now let's talk about the RAM I'm using. So you can find RAM for a bunch of different prices, um, kind of saving you a little bit here, but I guess this is kind of where I turn into the Corsair fanboy, which is bad, because I don't know if I'm actually a fanboy or it just makes it easier to use all of their products when you care about the RGB stuff. And I actually don't know how much I, I just turned off all of my lights now. I don't even use them that often, but it's just nice to have. So. All of that mumbo jumbo said, here's what I recommend as far as RAM. If you don't care about RGB, you can get some RAM um, for about 80 bucks. And I would recommend at the very minimum, get 16 gigs of RAM. If you can spend the extra money, go ahead and get 32 gigs off the get. It's gonna make your life so much easier, trust me. But if you can't spend the extra money, you can start off with 16, you'll be running fine, no problem. Nothing to worry about. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about your storage. As a videographer, especially when you're storing 4K footage, you not only wanna make sure that you have enough space on your CPU itself, but you're gonna need to have an external CPU to offload all the stuff that you're not using. And just it's just best to save it somewhere where you can always go back to it, just in case any of your drives fail or anything like that. So that's just the first thing I wanna make sure you guys understand. Don't skimp on your storage because it's gonna be very valuable to you later on. What I recommend using is an M.2 drive. So like the one I have here listed is the Western Digital. It doesn't really matter. You can find a bunch of them. I have a one terabyte one, it's 130 bucks, works great. But remember, 
that's just your main hard drive. You want to have possibly um, a regular hard drive, one of the spinning disk drives, the old school ones. And you can get those that have like two terabytes for like 50 bucks. So the reason that you're spending $130 for one terabyte is because it's significantly faster. So you're gonna be able to scrub through your footage and stuff like that. Everything's gonna be able to move a lot smoother on a faster drive. The older drives are a lot slower, but they're also a lot cheaper. So you wanna have one of those, possibly if you have the money, you have a bigger drive where you can unload some stuff, like maybe it's something you're not working on, but you're about to. But then again, you wanna have an external drive that you can unload all of this stuff onto later. So just in case something happens to your computer, you always have your files and you don't have to worry about, you know, you can't work because your computer's down or whatever. You always want to have all of these things on an external drive as well. Okay, the motherboard is probably one of the most overlooked parts. So I didn't think about this ahead of time. Now the motherboard I'm using does not include a Wi-Fi adapter. So this very bare bones motherboard does not have a lot of crazy stuff on it. I bought this one, it was like a hundred bucks. And power supply, we're not really pulling a lot of power um, with this build it's a very bare bones build so you don't need a super large power supply but if you do plan on upgrading to one of the bigger and better gpus down the road right and you're going to keep your same build but you want to get a bigger gpu you may want to make sure you have more power than this actually needs so for this build though if we're going to stick with this build you only really need about 500 watt power supply. You can go up, of course, if you need to. I didn't do that. I have a 500 watt power supply, but it's not even $50. It's like $48 or whatever. So you should be good to go with that. Now your case, I want to say is preferential. I used to say it's preferential. And then the case I was using before, as you guys may have known, if you're not here for the first time, is very different than the case I had before. If you're new to building a, a PC, you wanna make sure that you're finding a case that's gonna be easy for you to build in. So some of the cheaper cases um, are a little more cramped, it's harder to build in, and then also it's harder to add things into it later on. I started to realize as I started doing a little bit more research on casing that the case I had before had not great airflow either. So not only was it hard to add a better cooler in there, but the airflow didn't travel very well because the glass plane in the front was right up against where the fan was, leaving only like this much room for the fan to like pull air. Whereas now what I have, it has like a, as you saw in the video, it has like a little grate in the front to let air pass right through the front and flow straight out the back, which makes airflow so much better. Some cases may seem cheaper. You may get a um, case for like 50 bucks and it only has the exhaust fan, which means now you gotta go back and buy a couple more fans, which fans are pretty cheap. You can get like three fans for like 15 bucks um, if you're looking for just to save money. But again, for what we're doing, you shouldn't have to worry too much. So you can kind of search around. So essentially that's the build itself. Now the editing performance, I can tell you first of all, just editing 1080p footage, super smooth. Um, if you remember in this video where I had like six different shots at one time running, I had no problem scrubbing, scrubbing through the footage. Like it wasn't even skipping a beat the whole time I was scrubbing through it. And I had different effects going on. I had my color grade on there and it was just as smooth as can be. Also in that same video is where I was shooting, um, in the office though, but I was shooting in 4k in that video as well. And same thing i had different effects on top i also had um, my color grade and everything and i was scrubbing through and there is no issues whatsoever okay so now i just want to go over some of the little bonus talks so if you're going to be streaming or if you just like to play games this is for you right this is going to be fun first of all if you're going to be a gamer you can have a lot of fun gaming on this most of the games i play are Overwatch, Destiny 2, Call of Duty, Minecraft, all those fun games, right? So if you're playing any of those games, you should be able to, no problem, play on 1080p, high resolution, you know, all high graphics, maybe not ultra, but high graphics on most of them and get 60 frames per second, no problem. So at the very, very bare minimum, you should be able to get 60 frames per second steady no issues at all. If you are also going to be streaming, you can still hold that 1080p high quality 
beautiful looking screen with 60 frames per second which is a big deal if you're going to be streaming because you know you want your audience to see a very beautiful image as well so that to me i think is a very big deal and i'm using um obs to run my streams so if you i made a video about how to use obs and all that blah blah blah, blah. that's not important so you can definitely do a streaming session from this build as well and it'd be smooth now i do want to talk more in detail about some of the streaming and gaming stuff but this video is running a little longer than it needs to so please let me know in the comment section below if you would like to hear more about how i do my live streaming and gaming stuff and i'll definitely make another video about that but i don't want this video to go too long because of this little tag at the end so just to wrap up i have all the parts and everything listed in the description down below if I miss something or you guys have any tips as well to anyone who's building their PC for the first time or you have any questions, put that in the comment section down below too and I'll make sure to hop in and help you guys out with that. So, as always, I gave you guys some tools to create. Be great. Peace.